What is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? This once again is your pal Scott Porter back for a brand new unboxing series for the new Marvel Heroclix set, Avengers 60th. Boom! Of course, it is celebrating the 60th anniversary of what is now, I think, un inarguably the most iconic superhero team of all time. I think it's passed by any other superhero team at this point, uh, maybe just because of the MCU, but because of these 60 years of comics goodness that we have had. On the front, you see these kind of like pop art eyes of some of the classic Avengers, you know, your Captain Americas, your Iron Mans, your Thors, your Hulks, the original team, which Captain America wasn't actually on for a couple of issues, but uh, I will let it slide. That being said, usually... I come into these unboxing series and I say, hey, read this book, read this book, read this book. I don't know what to tell you with Avengers because whether it's Roy Thomas's Avengers, whether it's Stan Lee and Jack Kirby from the very beginning, whether it's uh, Busaic and, and George Perez, whether it's some of the more modern tales, the Bendises of the world, uh, the Mark Wades of the world, you know, whether it's uh, Stern's, Roger Stern's run. I mean, there are so many classic stories that were written by so many different uh, comic book authors. So I'm not sure where you start. Uh, I'm sure we'll see maybe some of today's Jason Aaron's run. Uh, maybe we'll see some offshoot runs. Uh, Rick Remender's Uncanny Avengers was awesome. Ed Brubaker's or uh, Jonathan Hickman's Secret Avengers. And of course, how could I forget Jonathan Hickman's run, which has been covered a lot in Hero Clicks. So I'm not sure what we are going to see in this brick. However, on the outside of it, we can garner some clues. Uh, on the outside of it, on one side, uh, oh, we have cosmic characters, it looks like. Um, I'm seeing here, let's see, Grandmaster, Beyonder, the new star brand. So maybe, uh, you know, we've got a little more, more cosmic bent than I expected. On the other side, some unclicked figures, uh, figures that we've never seen before in Hero Clicks form. This is the Hydra 4. You're talking uh, uh, Bowman, uh, Militant, was that his name? Militant, uh, Hammer, uh, Tactical Force, I think, was uh, the Iron Man. This was actually in a Spider-Man story, so it's really cool to see those guys on the outside of the box. And then, yes, I think our first clue that we definitely will be seeing uh, some of Jason Aaron's run, we have Doom Supreme on the back. Now, usually, the back of the box is telling us who our chases are going to be. It looks like now, I can officially say, uh, our chase figures, are they gonna be the multiversal masters of evil? Uh, is it, is it going to be Black Skull and Dark Phoenix and Doom Supreme and the Green Ghost and, and, uh, or Ghost Goblin? Green Ghost. What am I talking about? Ghost Goblin? Probably. Um, Mephisto brings them all together. Who knows? So I think that's what we're going to have for chases. Outside of that, I am just not too sure uh, what else we'll be seeing. So I'm going to change things up today. Usually I open the bricks from this side of the booster pack. Uh, I think I'm gonna start on the opposite side today. I don't know, right? First day of May, uh, April showers bring Hero Clicks flowers. And uh, you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling like getting a little crazy today, guys. Um, you know what? Usually uh, pull a super rare or something special back over here, but I'm just feeling like today, it's just a different day, man. It's just a different day. So we're gonna crack this open. Uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, two bricks today. Now, if everybody out there, if you haven't been a part of any of these Heroclix unboxing series, you're brand new to this, today we're going to open two booster packs, uh, and then we're going to today open the dice and tokens pack. And then throughout the week, we will open two boosters every day, uh, as well as one little special treat. This set has three play-at-home kits, which is crazy. That's a direct-to-consumer purchase. You know exactly what you're getting uh, when you buy these pieces. They're not in blind boxes, so you know what you're getting. So this set has three of them, which is nutty. Uh, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll open the play-at-home kits. And then Friday, I have all your legacy card information for this set. Legacy cards are back. Uh, there is a legacy card on the top of my brick. We'll figure out which one I pulled, and then I'll tell you all of the rest of the legacy card goodness. Now, uh, this set is tracking for pre-release uh, around May 25th, the week of May 25th, uh, with the set to officially release as of right now, of course, subject to change, around June 7th. Um, this does happen to be the week 
of our Hero Clicks for Huntington's charity event weekend, though. And if you are looking to get a hold of Avenger 60th before anybody else in the world, three weeks before any other pre release happens, uh, you can come down to Huntsville, Alabama this weekend and play in the Scott Porter vs. the World uh, Super Duper Avenger 60th pre release uh, sealed tournament. And that's happening as a part of our Hero Clicks for Huntington's charity event weekend that starts actually on Thursday, Thursday, May 4th, and running through Sunday. May 7th. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get your hands on this set. And it starts uh, this Friday, May 5th, down in Huntsville, Alabama. Go to HeroClicksForHuntingtons.com for more information on the charity event weekend. It's all in support of the Huntington's Disease Society of America. And uh, we are lo really looking forward uh, to this entire event weekend. Okay, um, that's not why we're here, though. We are here to open some HeroClix goodness. Um, hmm, I think I'll start with this one. Yeah, the new star brand being on the outside of the box is kind of cool. The cosmic characters threw me a little bit, but, I mean, sure, why not? Like, Secret Wars uh, cosmic stuff happens all the time with the Avengers, so it makes sense to me, I suppose. Um, again, there's so many fantastic runs of Avengers, so many different stories. Ooh, I'm hoping to get some, uh, some characters we've never seen before. Um, but I'm really hoping for some really cool iterations of all of our favorite Avengers from different runs over time. Um, you know, you've got Scroll, Kree Scroll Wars, you've got the original Avenger stories, you've got the Hickman run. I mean, there's just so many different places to pull from. Let's see where we are getting. All right, let's see here. Oh, yes. And the first figure we have is actually, I believe, now, she as a person is not unclicked. But Screaming Mimi has never actually been clicked, I don't believe, before. We have Songbird plenty of times. They're the same person. Um, but Screaming Mimi, that's awesome. Here we've got Vision. And his, uh, I think that's his all-new, all-different Avengers costume from that run. Um, we've got Stinger, yes, Cassie Lang making her first appearance as Stinger. We've seen her as Stature a number of times. We've got an Iron Man, one of our classic Avengers there. And then we have one of the big bads who's come back a number of times in Korvac. All right, that is the first set of pulls. I'm going to pull these guys back and uh, see who we're going to take a look at first today. Let's pop the cards open. Okay, inside. Oh, all right. Here we go. We got these special cards starting in the last set. Um, this one has... Avengers Through the Ages, it's a little bonus card in here, and uh, and I don't know if you guys will see, I'm going to put this up here, see if we can get a little close-up. Avengers Through the Ages, and this one has Hawkeye on it, and it's talking about the 1980s Avengers run, and, uh, and then on the back, it has your chase checklist. Yes, there we go. So we do know what's going to be in this set. I'm getting spoiled right now. We've got Black Skull, Dark Phoenix, King Killmonger, Doom Supreme, Kid Thanos, Hound, which is Wolverine. We've got Ghost Goblin, the Iron Inquisitor, Thor, and Mephisto. Jeez Louise. Okay. So, 10 chases? 10 chases here. Uh, oh, and uh, shoot. Mephisto has a little extra asterisk next to him. Ultra. Ultra chase. We have nine chases and an ultra chase. Uh, the 1980s, oh yes, the West Coast Avengers run. How could I forget that? Yeah, if I can get some Tiger action, if I can get some Hellcat action, if I can get some West Coast Avengers run in this set, that would be awesome. Uh, but it tells you all about the West Coast Avengers, how Hawkeye started them. Really, really cool. So for people who love to watch these unboxings because they don't really read comics and I'm able to share some comics lore, now WizKids itself is doing it with these cool little insert cards. That's really, really neat. Okay. I think we're going to start here with uh, Screaming Mimi, actually. Boom. Take a look at the figure. Take a look at the card. What a great sculpt there. Uh, Screaming Mimi is AIM, martial artist, masters of evil, thunderbolts, and celebrity keywords. Set number 34 has a trait called Nimble Wrestler. Free. Move up to one square. So like a little half sidestep there. Also, a movement special power, unlimited class wrestling, leap climb, and plasticity. On the back, a special defense or special attack power, modulated notes, pulse wave. Ooh. When Screaming Mimi uses it, choose Earthbound Neutralized 
or Battle Fury. Hit characters can use the chosen power until your next turn. Very, very cool. Yeah, you know, uh, the UCW, the, the Unlimited Class Wrestling, goes way back in time to... Uh, to when the thing was a part of this wrestling league, uh, wrestling league, we've seen She Thing, uh, Sharon Ventura in uh, in Clicks form in one of the Fantastic Four sets. Uh, that they were a part of the Unlimited Class Wrestling. Also Titania, if you're familiar with her, uh, Letha, who ended up I think dying in the storyline, the very first one. That's where Screaming Mimi uh, first appeared before she became Songbird and became a member of the Thunderbolts and uh, became the character that everybody loves nowadays. Hmm. What's in Scott Porter's cup today before we move on? Well, first of all, this is one of our Hero Clicks for Huntington's coffee mugs that we auctioned off in our big auction. Every year for Hero Clicks for Huntington's, we have a big auction that takes place on the Friday night. And it's a pretty cool cup. Uh, but what's in it? The king of all sodas, Cherry Coke. I gave up soda for Lent. Uh, I'm allowed to have it again now. So, yeah, king of all sodas, Cherry Coke. Come fight me, bro. Come fight me. Mmm. All right, moving on. Let's check out next. Um, let's go with this Vision here. All right. Vision, this is a really unique suit. And I seem to remember him wearing that in, in all new, all different Avengers. It, it was a group with Iron Man and uh, Jane Thor. Uh, or, you know, just Thor. But I have to, you know, make sure I say Jane. Uh, I think it had Sam uh, Nova. Uh, Sam as, uh, as Nova and uh, Miles Morales, uh, Sam Wilson as Cap, uh, I think is, was the rest of that team. Anyway, this vision has a trait. Through the wall, phasing teleport. When vision makes a close attack, characters within one square are considered adjacent regardless of terrain. That is really cool. Okay, a special defense power and tangible android body invincible and super senses on the back there you see the avengers team ability now the avengers team ability has changed with this set i'll read it right now uh, for the first and only time for all friendly characters with this team ability at the beginning of the game choose a team ability this character modifies attack by plus one when attacking one or more characters with the chosen team ability printed on their base i want to take a look at the front of the card one more time because i didn't say the keywords in the set number they have avengers and they have robot and set number 15. And on the back, yeah, it does say all new, all different Avengers. That was a book that was written by Mark Wade. It dealt a lot with the Squadron Supreme. It uh, had a lot of moving pieces. All new, all different Avengers was pretty cool. It's coming out of the, the other side of like the Marvel Now or is in the heat of the Marvel Now run. It's definitely, it's worth checking out. Like I said, it was Miles Morales. It was uh, Sam Wilson as Cap. It was Nova, but the younger Sam uh, as Nova. And so really leaned into the all new, all different. You had the different version of Spidey, a different version of Captain America, you know, so, uh, and that vision is, is much, much different looking. All right, let's move now into uh, Stinger. Stinger, Cassie Lang, is uh, Ant-Man's daughter, but you might have known her as Stature for some time. Uh, Stature, of course, uh, perishes in the Children's Crusade storyline uh, where Scarlet Witch is trying to find her sons again. Doom ended up killing uh, Cassie Lang, but ended up bringing her back. And uh, after she came back, a short while later, she took on the role of Stinger after she got powers back. Stinger has Avengers, Young Avengers, and Animal keywords. Set number nine, Ant-Man's partner. Energy shield deflection. Friendly characters with Tiny can use energy shield deflection. So if you want to build a whole tiny team, I guess, on the back of the card, the new Avengers team ability, Ant-Man number five, that Ant-Man run is really a lot of fun. Um, you know, look at the front of the card just one more time. Five clicks long, not too shabby there. Um, yeah, Zeb Wells' Ant-Man run is where this is coming from, I believe. Um, Zeb Wells, of course, uh, does a lot of really, really fun stuff 
and uh, and it's that Ant Man is no different. Watching the father daughter dynamic when the daughter is now just so aware that her dad is a little bit of an idiot is a lot more fun than it used to be. She used to have just such a massive amount of adoration for her dad. Scott Lang died once upon a time. Cassie Lang, of course, became a young Avenger, and uh, I love their evolving relationship. And Zeb Wells' run is really a lot of fun. Yeah, she came back after Doom resurrected her. She had no powers. She ended up going to the power broker getting her powers kind of back, and now she's back in the Pym Particle fold. So awesome. Hoping we get Scott in this set as well. I'm going to move on to one of our big Avengers. I'm going to move on to this Iron Man. Love how he's, it looks like he's putting that glove on, like he's just like the last step of getting armored up. Uh, he's got Avengers, Illuminati, Stark Industries, Symbiote. Oh, whoa, okay. Symbiote, Armor, and scientists, okay, this is cool. Set number 10 has a trait, pilot on Avengers, precision strike, friendly characters that are adjacent or have the Avengers keyword can use precision strike. Extreme Beot, there we go. Plasticity and shape change. Pretty solid dial. I love the telekinesis up front. Don't usually see that with Iron Man. Uh, sidestep, TK, two targets, four range. Not bad, not bad. You've got a little barrier on the back of the card, the Avengers keyword. Iron Man number one, 2020 is the significant appearance that it puts there. Uh, but of course, we've known Iron Man for a long time. See the extreme beot. See, Tony Stark at one point tried to save Eddie Brock. I think it was in the middle of the King and Black uh, storyline. And he used the extremists. Uh, nanotechnology, all the extremist stuff that Iron Man utilizes in his suit. And somehow, one of the symbiotes bonded with the extremist protocol. And that now you have this extreme biote. So you have this, uh, this <laughs> symbiote kind of infused nanotechnology armor uh, that Iron Man has. So yeah, the extreme biote. If you didn't know where that term came from, that's what it is. And, you know, it's really just up to whoever's writing it right now of like how cool that can actually be. Um, but yeah, there you go. The Extreme Beot. Uh, I love it. Well, well done. Last but not least, we're going to go with Korvac. We don't have anyone else to look at. So Korvac, usually you might remember seeing him like a big purple energy ball, um, any number of different ways. Korvac's from the future. He's a traitor to the human race. Uh, under the Badoon Empire, he came back in time. And uh, he has Cosmic, Future, and Robot keywords. Supercharged Android Body. When Korvac takes damage from a ranged attack after resolutions, give him a charged token. When Korvac makes a ranged attack, you may remove any number of his charged tokens to modify his damage by the number of tokens removed. Nine clicks long, pretty solid. On the back, you've got a special attack power, lightning capture. Steel energy, but with any attack, when Korvac uses it, he instead heals a number of clicks equal to the number of his charged tokens for a maximum of two. A special damage power, fuller teal hard, fuller tie hard, I think Oh man, why is that ringing a bell? I think that might have been one of his aliases. Um, I read an Iron Man book. I, I believe that that is one of his aliases. Um, he's got leadership, outwit, shape change, fuller, teal hard. Nice. Uh, real name, Michael Korvac, significant appearance, uh, Iron Man number seven. Yeah, it is. It's in that new Iron Man book with uh, Misty Knight and Gargoyle and Frogman where uh, they deal with this new version of Korvac. So if you're saying, hey, you know, this Korvac really doesn't look like the Korvac of old that I knew, that's because this is a newer version. So even though this is Avengers 60th, it seems like a lot of the versions that we're getting of these characters are more from like the last decade or so, as opposed to being way back from the 60s. Now, that might change as we open more, we might see, because Screaming Mimi definitely is a throwback. Um, but, you know, Iron Man with the Extreme Beot, Cassie being Stinger instead of Stature, uh, the Vision from the all new, all different Mark Wade run, so as we go through this, I'm going to be interested to see where all of these characters are coming from time-wise, you know. Um, but there we have it. Booster number one. Okay, booster number two. Hopefully, we pull something good. I know I'm living dangerously. Usually, you've got something 
pretty solid in this side of the booster. Um, darn it. See, here's the deal. I, I did I did what I don't usually do, and I opened from the opposite side, and I got no super rare. I got no prime. I got no super rare. I got nothing. Blah. Not, not to say these figures aren't great, because I'm seeing one particular figure in here that I am super excited to have in clicks form. So let's start with uh, a generic that we have. We have Ultron drones. So uh, Ultron confirmed. You know, Age of Ultron, what come out of the other side of that with Avengers AI, with all the Avengers teams uh, was pretty cool. Wonder if we're going to get some Age of Ultron style characters here. We've got the Hulk. Quietly, I put bats down. Uh, Doctor Strange's little ghost dog there. Uh, very John Wick-esque storyline for Doctor Strange. And I'll get more into that in a little bit here. We have, yes, one of the old Avengers West Coast. That's right. That is Hellcat. I'm super excited about Hellcat. And then we've got Falcon here. Uh, you can see. So we've got a, another big-time Avenger, a little bit of an offshoot Avenger, or a couple of big-time Avengers, a little bit of an offshoot storyline Avenger. So, you know, the first one we had a, a young Avenger. This one, we have a West Coast Avenger. Uh, we've got a sign signaling that maybe a big bad. And then we've got somebody I didn't expect in Bats. So let's start with this Ultron drone here. Ultron drone. Masters of Evil, Armor, and Robot. Keyword, set number 13. Has a trait, Hive Mind. When Ultron Drone starts the game, turn it to any starting line. And you can see there, you've got three different starting lines that you can, uh, you can fire up. It's 30 points, so I don't know how many you'll be able to fit on a team with Ultron. I'll have to wait and see if we pull Ultron, and if we do, uh, how expensive Ultron is. Uh, flip the card over, you see no special powers outside of that. Masters of Evil, which adjusted about a decade ago. Uh, when an adjacent friendly character makes a close attack, modify the target's defense by negative one if the character is adjacent to this character. Uh, if you have a drone swarm, maybe you can start really taking advantage of the Masters of, e of Evil uh, team ability there. All right. Very cool. Got a little, got a little generic action. <sighs> Who do we want to go with next? You know, I was very excited to pull her Hellcat. She was a West Coast Avenger. She was also a defender uh, for a long time. I love the history of Hellcat. I, I don't think a lot of modern day players really know Hellcat. Um, she's got Avengers, Defenders, Celebrity, and Detective Keywords. She's set number 19. She has Mystical Immunity. Hellcat has Safeguard, Mystics, Team Ability. She has a special movement power. Here comes the Hellcat. That's awesome. Charge and a leap climb on the back. She's got the new Avengers team ability plus the Defenders team ability, Patsy Walker. See, the whole story of Patsy Walker is really, really interesting to me. Um, she started out as like, like a teen heartthrob kind of star of her own like comic strip like her parents i think were like comic strip writers it was very much like archie comics like kind of thing like she was like veronica or something like that and uh and then you know ultimately she uh, gained some powers became a superhero um she married her high school sweetheart and everything that all fell apart he ended up being an evil guy and then she ended up all of a sudden marrying damien hellstrom so that's why she has all these mystical uh powers as well hellcat um very, very cool little storyline there. And she's been a big part of the Defenders for a long time. So now I'm starting to have hope. You know, we've got another Avenger Defender here in the Hulk. Maybe we'll see some Surfer action. Maybe we'll see uh, some of the other Defenders. You know, we've, we know that Strange might be in this set, so we might have some really solid Defender stuff. So since I mentioned him, let's go ahead and take a look at the Hulk. This figure is huge. And as he turns around, just look at the muscles popping on that back. Oh, my gosh. I love this sculpt. This sculpt looks awesome. I mean, it feels like an actual Hulk here. You've got Avengers, Defenders, and Brute. Set number 17. Trait, the Incredible Hulk. Hulk can reduce penetrating damage. When Hulk is dealt damage, roll a D6 and reduce the damage by half the result. So you've got willpower there, so you can be pulling tokens if you need to be. You have the ability to reduce damage, but I'm not used to seeing a Hulk without any defensive powers actually physically appearing on the dial. That's really interesting 
design there. A lot of regeneration at the end. Kind of makes me feel a little bit like a Mortal Hulk uh, in that regard. On the back, you see Avengers and Defenders. And yep, there you go, Immortal Hulk number 20 as, uh, as kind of the sign. Is that Al Ewing, the Immortal Hulk run? So good. Uh, Ewing is one of the best writers that they have over at Marvel. Hopefully I didn't misspeak there. Okay, there's the Hulk. Man, he is such a big figure with such a tiny little head, though. <laughs> it's such a tiny little head. It's awesome. Okay, moving on, we'll go to Falcon. I'm going to save the bats for last. The best, the best bats, the best boy for last. Uh, here's Falcon. Here's Sam. We've got Avengers and Soldier, Soldier keyword, set number 30, comes in at 50 points. Trait, aerial extraction, move. Move. After re resolutions, you may choose a standard friendly character that shares a keyword with Falcon that he moved through during this action. If you do, place that character adjacent to him. So he's kind of like, uh, yeah, he's kind of a little boomerang effect, you know? Maybe you toss somebody out with some telekinesis, you do some damage, Falcon goes out, grabs him, bring him back to safety or her back to safety. Also on the back, you've got a special movement power flyby punch, charge. When Falcon uses it, after resolutions, you may roll a d6 and move him up, move him a number of squares up to half the result. You also have a special defense power, modified flight suit, energy shield deflection, and toughness. There you go. Sam Wilson, Falcon. I do like the yo-yo effect. A lot of synergy with some other uh, figures that we've already seen today. You know, you've got that Iron Man with telekinesis. You can toss somebody out, do some damage. Falcon can go up, grab them, and pull them away. Uh, very, very cool. Okay, last but not least, bats. Now, anybody that hasn't read um, the the Doctor Strange run where bats appears, uh, I challenge you to go read it. Bats shows up actually as a real dog, not a ghost dog at first. Uh, it's Doctor. It, it's it's Doctor Strange has had a tough time. He's just uh, had the title of Sorcerer Supreme pulled from him, and Loki has taken over. And Doctor Strange becomes a veterinarian. And this 16-year-old dog, or however old he is, like he's like 11, 15, 16 years old, shows up as a as a calming presence for Doctor Strange. Let's take a look at this card real quick. We've got. Set number 16, it's got Avengers, Defenders, Pet Avengers, Animal, and Mystical. Strange faithful, Strange's Faithful Hound. Adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword with bats modify attack by plus one. Also has a trait, Ghost Dog, Super Senses. On the back, you see as Mystics. And in Donny Cates' run, and I'm surprised that bats doesn't have this power. In Donny Cates' run, bats is actually able... Uh, to possess people, kind of like Strange can sometimes in astral form jump into somebody else's body and occupy their space. Bats can do that same thing. Uh, but when Bats shows up in Doctor Strange's life, like I was saying, uh, Doctor Strange is no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. Loki has tricked him into handing the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme over to Lor Loki, and Stephen Strange just becomes a veterinarian. <laughs> he doesn't have a medical license anymore, so he can't be a real doctor. And, and Bats is abandoned with him and he ends up uh, casting an incantation that allows Bats to speak. Um, Bats has no regard for secrecy at all. He speaks in front of anybody and everybody and he's got like this very New York uh, kind of attitude about him. He's not like a cute like dopey dog. He's quick-witted, he's super sharp and he keeps Doctor Strange on his toes and then there's a battle between Strange and Loki and Loki um, ends up kind of, uh, he puts up a barrier around Bats that makes Bats kind of really agitated, and Bats' heart gives out, and he dies. And, uh, you know, in the middle of this whole story, Doctor Strange has gone to uh, Yggdrasil, the, the tree of, of magic in, in Asgard, and, and has asked for his, his magic powers back, and the tree um, asks for an offering of some type. And at this point in Doctor Strange's life and Donny Cates' run, Strange doesn't have anything except for his friend's body. And he offers bats as the offering, and to which the tree says, uh, this is a worthy offering. And it takes bats and, uh, and gives Strange um, some magic from the tree of Asgard, to which everything has a price, of course, but, uh, but then that tree ends up bringing bats back to life. So... Bats, awesome inclusion in this set. Did not expect them to show up. If you didn't read Donny Cates' uh, 
Strange run, or if you ever read Strange Academy, which is also a really cool run, I didn't expect to be touching on that in, in this Avengers set, but uh, there you have it. The little bonus card we had was uh, Avengers Through the Years, uh, 90s. So it's talking about Black Widow, it's talking about the, the 90s Avengers runs. I'll let you guys uh, take a peek at that whenever you pull it. I mean, unless you, I guess I could read it. As the Avengers membership continued to expand, characters such as Black Widow were further developed and integrated into the main plot. Forced to face increasingly lethal foes, this era was defined by conflict over some of the group's policies and accountability. The 90s were the, the decade of everybody pushing things just a little too far, and a lot of superheroes starting to look very much the same. You know, big upper bodies, tiny little legs. That all happened during the 90s. Uh, but there you go. That's the breakdown of our two boosters today. We do have a little goodie uh, that we're going to open up now. The Avengers 60th Dice and Token Pack. On this, you have the most classic of classic Avengers. You have Black Panther, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and Black Widow. You got some really cool dice that I'll put on the spinner for you here in just a second. And uh, I want to look at the back of them, though, because the back of these dice and token packs always give us big clues on where we might be going uh, in this set, what we might be pulling in this set. So I'll let you take a little peek at these dice here once I get them lined up. You've got the 60 for Avengers 60th. Great looking dice. Boom. I love how they put the A in the, in the 60 there on this design. Very, very cool, WizKids. Okay, let's take a look at these tokens now. All right. The first uh, token we have is, uh, is Hulk. On the back of Hulk, we have Tippy Toe. All right, Squirrel Girl confirmed in the set, right? That's what that means? Awesome. All right, the next one we have Black Panther. On the back side, we have a zombie. Okay, any number of characters could be yanking these zombies in, including Black Panther himself. Uh, during Hickman's Secret Wars run, uh, he becomes the king of the undead and has a zombie army all his own. So who knows what we're going to get out of that. Here we go. Boom. Got Black Widow. On the back, a Red Hulk bystander token. Red Hulk as a bystander token. That's crazy to me. I think there was uh, a, an LE Thunderbolt Ross from uh, Incredible Hulk set that could have a Red Hulk bystander. So uh, maybe we're doing a little callback to that. The next one's Iron Man. And on the back side, oh, a war machine with a little Masters of Evil there. Next one, we've got Thor. On the back side of Thor, we have, oh, wait, he's upside down. Ah, there's Thor. On the back side, we've got another zombie. I want to know where all these zombies are coming from. And then Captain America, and we have another War Machine. Uh, and I think these War Machines might be Black Skull's War Machines from the Avengers Forever run? I don't know. I'm looking at it. I think they probably are Black Skull's War Machines, who uh, Robbie Reyes ends up just destroying in this little Avengers Forever run. So there you have it, our Dyson Tokens pack, um, the figures that we pulled today in our two boosters. Remember, uh, set is tracking for some pre-release on May 25th with the official release coming sometime around the week of June the 7th. That being said, uh, today is May 1st. This weekend, May 4th through the 7th, is our incredible virtual and in-person Hero Clicks for Huntington's charity event weekend where we will be raising money to support the Huntington's Disease Society of America in their fight against Huntington's disease. Anybody out there who has watched any videos that I've been a part of in the past might know that Huntington's runs uh, in my family and we are trying to raise money to help the small community that is affected by this disease, which is um, mentioned as kind of like being ha like having ASL, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's all rolled into one. It's a genetic neurodegenerative disease. It's awful and it tears through families. Every, every child of a family with a parent that has Huntington's disease has a 50-50 shot of inheriting it. And uh, we're just trying to find a cure 
and also help families that are living with it. Over the past couple of years, we've raised over $60,000 with our Hero Clicks for Huntington's event weekend. So if you are interested in taking part at all, whether in person, so you can play the super pre-release for Avengers 60th, which will be this Friday, May 5th, or if you want to take part in any of our other tournaments or figure out how you can jump in online and take part in the auction or our online battle royals that we'll be running all weekend, just go to HeroClicksForHuntingtons.com for all the information. I hope to see some of you there and uh, or see some of you or talk to some of you online, I guess. Uh, Thank you so much to WizKids for sharing this with me. This is incredible. Can't wait to get my hands on this set. Uh, this Friday, I'll be playing in the Scott Porter vs. The World Tournament, so I'll be playing with some of these figures coming up uh, this Friday. Thank you to WizKids. Thank you to Hyper RPG Studios, where we're at right now uh, in beautiful Universal City, California. Uh, we got Joe on the ones and twos in the back. Thank you, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments down below who you are hoping for in this unboxing series this week. What is your biggest hope. Hashtag biggest hope, and then tell me what character you are hoping to see. Hashtag biggest hope, what character are you hoping to see? Tell me in the comments down below. That is going to do it for day one of our unboxing series. I will see you guys tomorrow, but until I do, may all your rolls be critical hits. Peace.